I've been meaning to do a video about my solar shed. Uh, it's been a while, so I thought I would uh, do a quick, uh, quick overview of what I've got set up. Uh, so on the top, I have a bunch of solar panels. Uh, none of them are attached properly, but hasn't been an issue. I've got on the back that you can't see is a 100 watt and a 40 watt in series to give me uh, 24 volts. And then have two 20 watt panels. And then also this little one is a five watt panel. Um, coming in, this is my uh, hack job of a solar distribution board. Um, so the 40 and 20 watt so the 40 and the 100 watt panel uh, in series goes into this uh, Victron MPPT solar charge controller. Um, uh, so this is the best one I've got. And so this runs uh, most things in the shed. I've got it hooked up to a dodgy little uh, amp meter. So when you turn it on, you can see that easily. And that's coming straight from the, that's amps on the solar side. A very uh, hack job method of uh, attaching it at the moment, so I uh, definitely should replace that. Um, I then also have a, uh, it's a bit hard to see in this light, but a, a voltmeter as well. So we're not really on, on load at the moment, so it's sitting at about 40 volts. Um, if, as soon as I turn it on, it should uh, drop a bit once it's pulling some amps. Uh, I then have another couple of other solar charge controllers. Uh, this is the first one I purchased. Um, nice cheap little unit and it's not MPPT it's just a, a basic basic one. Um, I did blow the uh, output fuse in it uh, so at the moment I'm just using it to keep a, one of these little uh, seven amp hour SLA batteries topped up. Um, so the charge component works and the solar works but the load doesn't and the fuse is soldered on, so I haven't had a chance to replace that. The other one that I've got here is this this one, which is very much the same, but it was about $13 on eBay, and uh, it, it's pretty cool. I'd actually recommend this as like a basic solar charge controller. Again, not MPPT, but works well, and you can see the voltage, and it's got USB ports, and you can turn on and off the load and things like that. So I have this particular one hooked up to this little um, uh, sensor so that when I'm... Uh, open the door the light comes on so this one's totally separate so it means that if I'm doing work on this I've still got I've got some some light whereas this this particular one um, Victron hooks up to the biggest battery that I've got which is a 45 amp hour uh, I really would like to move to uh, lithium batteries but haven't yet I've got a 5 amp fuse hooked up to it um, I don't usually draw more than three or four amps out of it. It's not a very big battery. Um, so that's that. And then that goes into this section here, which is my main, uh, again, it's hard to, to see, but that's, it'll be reading about 13 volts because I'm float at the moment. But if I turn on the light, it'll, it'll drop back down a bit. But, um, so this is my main 12 volt um, output from the battery, from the load. So I've got a nice little USB um, power, uh, which runs the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is hooked up to the Victron's um, uh, output, so I, I've got some logging on a little web server that I created to, to log um, how much power is being drawn and generated, um, and that's just using a little Python script. Uh, so that's just running um, Debian, so that's pretty cool. I also have this um, P, uh, PoE power injector to convert um, 12 volts into 48. Actually, I think no, I think this is a 20 volt passive PoE because um, I did have an access point in here unfortunately it really drew too much power for this particular battery and um, I've since fixed some of the wires in the house which has made it better out here um, so that is there uh, I then have another little light here uh, this is also running off the main the main battery again this is just running off a this is a bit of a mess sorry but this is just running off a little um, Arduino again with a little sensor here so that light also comes on when I uh, get into the shed. Um, I also have another Raspberry Pi here. Now this is running a, uh, a home bridge enabled um, water watering system so we can use Siri to turn the watering system on and off. 
and that's just the relay to turn on the um the, the solenoid. Uh, I've got a couple of little orange uh, orange Pi zeros like they are, but they the wires is really buggy in them, so I switched to the the Raspberry Pi zero, which works a lot better. Um, fiddling with some audio stuff. Uh, I've then got a uh, the switch hooked up for the main main lighting, which works pretty well. Uh, and that actually this draws quite a lot of power it's a, you know two or three amps I think on the 12 volt um, yeah so I mean I really like to tidy up some of this it's a bit of a mess at the moment um, I want to some of these batteries are really not not longer serviceable so they need to be fixed up um, and yeah a bit of a tidy up but that's my my basic solar shed which gives me um, power and, and lighting in the shed uh, and it's great at night just with the auto like uh, this light here and this one here is more than enough at night to to you know get something out of the shed um, if I need to. Um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much it at the moment. And my dog's helping me about to do some lawn mowing potentially. So yeah, it's pretty cool. The Victron definitely recommend it. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, if you want something cheap, a 20 watt panel and, and one of these works really well for a basic setup. Uh, and that's what I'd start with if you you're just playing around with solar. But if you want something a bit more serious, then definitely this uh, MPPT charge control is great. There's now a smart solar version, which has Bluetooth built in, um, which I'd recommend. Um, again, they're only about 120 Australian dollars, so it's well worth it. And um, then you can run the app on your phone. So I bought this before that was out, and this actual cable was about $50, so it was quite expensive. So um, if, I, if I end up replacing these, which I might at some point, I'll probably get the smart solar and put it here and then move this one move this one down um, yeah um, but my biggest issue really is battery capacity at the moment the 45 amp hour is fine for running a couple of Raspberry Pis some lights um, and this uh, this draws like an app when it's running um, to keep the solenoid open and that's that that, last, that runs for about 15 20 minutes each day um, so it's it's fine until I start loading it up I've got a um, an inverter that doesn't get used because it just draws too much power. It's a small one. I bought like pure the smallest sine wave, pure, pure sine wave one possible, but it's just really not enough power to, to do any 240 volt stuff. So great for little things. Um, and you know, hopefully one day I'll go up to a, like a lithium 100 amp hour or something. That'd be that'd be nice. So yeah, that's pretty much the uh, setup at the moment.